Hi, I'm Joe. I'm Paul. And uh, we're from 65 Days of Static. And you are watching uh, getaddicted.org. Well, it doesn't mean that we don't give a shit, but it does mean that we kind of made the album that we wanted to make. And we ho hopefully it kind of will explode when you put it on in your car, your bedroom and stuff. When we first started out, we were very, very electronic. We didn't ha even have a, um, a drummer, really. All the beats were electronic and stuff. But we ended up making some albums, and one of them, the last one, was quite um, lengthy, and there were lots of different instruments on it, and um, lots of time signatures, and we were really, really into doing that um, then. And so we kind of wanted to make a record that was a little bit more immediate, I, I'd say we didn't set out to write a more electronic album, but we set out to write an album that we could um, perform live. The thing that makes it seem more electronic is the use of synths and stuff, which we use a lot more, but Paul's always played a lot of piano, and Simon um, also plays the piano and stuff. It just seemed more interesting to stop using piano sounds and, and use synth sounds and stuff. So, mm. yeah, just make something tight and hard and w well layered yeah. rather than crazy. Yeah. Mm. There's, there's a, f a few amazing bands that get called post-rock, like, like Mogwai and, and Godspeed, but then there's a whole flurry of, of lesser bands who write instrumental music that starts quiet and gets loud and takes a long time and they've all got beards and it's usually four guys and it's very like so there's a few bands who are doing it really well but you're never going to do it as well as Mogwai or Godspeed. If we listened to all that stuff then logically we would go to our rehearsal room and say how can we write the best post-rock album ever because we're post-rock but but we certainly didn't want to make a record that could be easily called that. Hopefully it requires journalists to put a little bit more thought into what they're saying. <laughs> but personally as a band, uh, we do take a lot of care of everything. I wouldn't want to call something something meaningless, but at the same time the song titles aren't necessarily full of a clear meaning. It's more just a, a, a kind of feeling behind the song. And all those song titles would probably make, uh, will have different meanings for all four of us. I mean, like C Crash Tactics, which is the single from the record, which will be out on the 19th of April, is, um, you know, just a, like a phrase that Paul's been saying for years. And it was kind of just like, kind of what our band was like, you know, not particularly professional, um, <laughs> not particularly well dressed. Just kind of this. But, but you turn up some worst. To prepare for the worst and turn up somewhere and 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 just do your best and play as hard as possible. Coffee, 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 coffee crossword, some arguing, argument. There's a room lunch. that's about half the size of this room that you fit all of the stuff into yeah. and then stand on top of it, um, um, and then and then we go home early. Yeah. We're pissed off. <laughs> 80% of the rehearsing that you do is just hard work. You just have to try things and you have to keep trying them. And then you just have these great moments where mm. things come together and that's... There's one in March last year. Yeah, I remember one. <laughs> well, we wrote like a lot, we wrote maybe 30 songs for this record before we even started writing, started writing songs that ended up on this record okay. so we just kind of got through all the crap that was in our heads and then we threw it out so I suppose that that was kind of one of the major things we did with this record is we wrote a lot of 65 days of static songs which were great and then a bit too. and then we just threw them away mm -hmm. and we thought that would be the bravest thing to do Tom Waits Tom York, Saul Williams, Bjork, Lou Reed. Yeah, don't think he did. The lady from the AA, yes, that fantastic lady. Karen O. Karen O. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, we couldn't do this, and if we did do it and put all those individual tracks on an album, we wouldn't really be able to tour it. 
so probably it wouldn't happen in, in such a way. So. Well, uh, first time in Japan. First time in Japan. A it, yeah, a place called Yekaterinburg in, in Russia, which is in, in the Urals and like it's on the edge way, of way out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and we got there after being awake for about 35 hours because of the various flights we took um, and turned up at this warehouse. We were expecting a, you know, a club show of 300 capacity or something and it was just this giant warehouse, basically a warehouse party rave waiting for us to arrive yeah. and there was giant screens and like MTV there with cameras on cranes and there were all these Russian kids just going crackers from the second we walked on stage it was it was good no not at the moment we're very very lucky that, that we don't we, we we did for a long long time uh, until we released until about a year after one time for all time we, we were still working and like any kind of any job, job that you, you can, can quit fast yeah I, 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 I worked in an office for uh, a terrible internet company that booked hotel rooms I worked in a coffee shop and then I worked in a, a not an Amsterdam coffee shop in England it's just coffee but and um, I worked in a uh, like a gift shop <laughs> it's it horrible yeah it's horrible if you if you have a, a proper job and a salary and you say I'm going on tour for six weeks then you kind of get sacked, man. Or you, you don't really get the job in the first place. That's a really difficult question because that's the one thing that we never, ever think about. And the only reason we got here, or got anywhere, is by not thinking about that because it's too scary. <laughs> um, really, we've, we've, yeah, we've really, we, we've burnt all all bridges. Really, yeah. the only plan we have is to be in this band and imagine pulling in a CV. Ah, yeah, what you have you done for ten years? <laughs> well, um, I was in this band. It's like, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I don't think we'll ever, any of us will stop making music. No, I think um, we're like, and I don't think we're anywhere close to splitting up yet. We don't, nobody really wants to do that. We're having quite a good time. <laughs> <laughs>